Good morning. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. We are going to tell you how you can get ahead of cybersecurity attacks with Microsoft Enterprise Mobility and Security Suite. My name is Demi Albus. I'm a senior product marketing manager in Microsoft's Enterprise Mobility and Security Marketing team. And today I brought my great teammates with me, Nasos Kalerakis, who is responsible for Azure Active Directory, as well as Pragya Pandey, who is responsible for Azure Information Protection. Within Enterprise Mobility and Security, we have a holistic approach to help you with your security challenges across your users, your devices, your applications, and data. I think by this time, we threw you enough statistics. So I won't go over, go over all of the statistics here. But it's needless to say, it is a tough world out there. You're facing cybersecurity attacks. Unfortunately, most of them are traced back to lost, weak, or compromised user credentials. Your users may or may not follow your policies. That ends up with shadow IT. There is this huge trend towards transition to cloud and mobility. Scott went through this in his keynote, as well as Brad went through it. Our employees obviously want to get the work done faster and quicker. They're not necessarily, all the time, have malicious intent. But they just want to get the work done. So they may not enroll their devices. They may be using some SaaS applications. In fact, 80% of the time, they say that they do, and you're not aware of it. So there's this huge trend towards transition to cloud and mobility. On the other side, attackers are getting way more sophisticated. Just last week, we have heard about Yahoo breach, one of the largest breaches in the history. So when you put these two trends together, traditional solutions are no longer sufficient. Is it because they're bad? No. They were designed for a different era, when attackers were using malware and viruses, when they are breaching into identities, when they're using innocent users' identities to get into our systems, these traditional solutions are not helping us. We know that you have a lot of point security solutions. On average, we know that you have about 18 security solutions, all point solutions, not necessarily talking to each other. We believe that we should provide you a holistic approach. That's why we are making significant investments within Microsoft Enterprise Mobility and Security Suite to the extent that we changed the name of the suite from Enterprise Mobility Suite, and we added the security as a very key pillar. Because we cannot detach mobility and identity from security. We believe that we need to provide you a holistic solution that help you protect your identities, devices, applications, data, not only in the cloud, but as well as on-premises. Because we know you have a hybrid environment, and we will meet you wherever you are. We say that our solution is identity-driven. What does it mean? We start with giving your users a single identity to access thousands of applications. And we protect that identity. We detect it if it gets breached. This is why we say identity-driven security. And our solutions are innovative. That is an overused term. Microsoft has made three acquisitions in the security field, all as a part of EMS now. Julia mentioned these acquisitions in the keynote. The first one, Air Auto, behavioral analytics solution. In 2014, Microsoft made an acquisition, became Microsoft Advanced Threat Analytics, in short for ATA. Then we have acquired Adalom, a CASB solution, a cloud access security broker. We released into market as Microsoft Cloud App Security. Then we have acquired Secure Islands, which became Azure Information Protection, all as a part of EMS. 
Why are we making these investments? Because attackers' techniques have changed. This is why we need to change our approach, too. This market is not only about knowing, but it's about learning every day. That's why we are making these investments as well as we are making significant investments within Azure Active Directory. You may have seen, actually, Azure Active Directory is a leader in major quadrants within Gartner this year. And we say that our solutions are intelligent. Scott and Yusuf explain at Keynote Microsoft Intelligence Security Graph. What does it mean? If Microsoft Digital Crimes Unit finds a bad IP, Azure AD benefits from that signal. If Azure AD finds a bad IP, Cloud App Security puts it into its threat detection. That is the power of intelligence security graph. We have great technology, but if you want to keep up with these attackers, we need to every day learn. And that's what we do with Microsoft Intelligence Security Graph. OK, you will say, this is all nice marketing talk. How do you do it? How do I get from point A to point B in my environment? When I talk to you, you tell me, OK, you have a lot of technologies. Show me where the gaps are in my, in my environment and how your technologies help me to identify and solve those gaps, cover those gaps. We have three steps to get you there within Microsoft Enterprise Mobility and Security Suite. It all starts with protecting at the front door first. We want to make sure that, first, we don't get those attackers into your system. It's not an easy task. And we innovate. We provide you advanced, risk-based conditional access so we can catch those attackers and not let them in in the first place. So we protect it at your front door. So what happens when you're in your system? There are two types of scenarios I see. Good guys, bad behavior. All of your users, your employees, have good intentions, want to get the work done faster, quicker. They may be reckless, though. They may be using SaaS applications, devices. They may be saving critical data, sensitive data, into places that they shouldn't. So how do we protect our data against user mistakes? How do we make sure that our data is safe with mobile applications, SaaS applications, and in general, on-premises and in the cloud. How do I protect my data so I don't open the gate for vulnerabilities? And the final scenario, no matter what we do, we may get breached. Hopefully not, but most of the time, organizations do. Microsoft faces this every day. We have thousands of user accounts. And every day, we watch for user credential leaks or compromises. Attackers stay within your network anywhere from 140 to 200 days. The idea is to be able to catch them before they cause damage, before they access critical data. How do we do that? By using behavioral analytics. We have a new technology to do that as well. Now I would like to hand it over to Nassos Kolarakis, who will tell you how to protect at the front door with Azure Active Directory Identity Protection. Thank you, Demi. Welcome from my side, too. So let's move to the first step. Let's move to the first step of uh, how you can protect your system, protection at the front door. As I always say, stay reassured that it's not just protection at the front door. It's protection at the back door, at the windows, in the bridges, in every, uh, in every entrance of your system, we apply the controls I will share with you. So no matter where your users or the bad guys are trying to access data, resources, applications of your system, we will be there with a wall that won't be a traditional firewall around your network, it's a wall, it's a perimeter around your user, around your identities. So the new thing that we're protecting, the new front door, if you want, is that user. Imagine a protection layer around your users, no matter where they are, inside the network, outside of the network. No matter what they are trying to access, cloud applications or on-premise applications. 
The common thing that these applications have, based on our identity-driven security uh, model, the common thing that all these applications and resources ha have is that they are protected by our identity system. So we want you to connect your applications with our identity system, with Azure Active Directory, and we can do that for your cloud applications, for your custom applications, for mobile applications, for on-premises web applications. So all these applications can be protected by this protection system I will describe. And this protection system is a set of conditional access controls. Conditional access controls that will trust no one. It's not enough anymore to come at the front door with your new username and password. It's not enough. You have to prove every time who you are. You have to prove every time that you are the right person from the right place and the right device in order to let you in. For that reason, we have static, if you want, I mean, that's my term, static conditional rules. By static, I mean there are rules that you set. So you define what is your uh, favorite location, what is your corporate network, and you say, this is uh, my network. I consider that a safe place. You can set rules regarding devices. So I want access for this application only from managed devices, or from known devices, or from domain join devices. And then you can set, based on the sensitivity of the application that you will define, if you want everyone to have access to this application, or just a group, or if I don't care from where you are coming, I will apply additional factors of authentication, multi-factor authentication, for sensitive applications. So the static part of the conditional access is something that you have seen a lot, I assume, and it's location-based, device-based, user, group, and application sensitivity based. So all these rules are, can be applied by you per application or in your organizational level, of course, and then you can get the basic front door protection. But Demi said something more, said that we are innovating. We are doing things that you expect from us. We are driving the, uh, the fight against the cybercrime. So what that, what's the innovative part of the protection at the front door? Let me tell you. You can see one more factor out there, one more control, and it says risk. Microsoft is in a great position, I don't know if it's that great, but I mean, of having millions of attacks every day. Okay? I don't even want to share the number because you might be scared. Okay? Yeah. We are talking about millions of authentications every day, of attacks. And that's reasonable because we have billions of authentications. So every day we have 1.3 billion authentications on our enterprise systems, Azure Active Directory, Azure Office 365, uh, CRM, Yammer, all these systems. 1.3 billion authentications. And we have, listen to that, 13 billion authentications every day against Skype, Outlook, Xbox, all our consumer goods. And we gather the signals and all the attacks, the millions of attacks, that are happening every day, the bad behavior of users, the bad IPs that are trying to access our systems, we gather them, and through a, a smart machine learning engine, we know who has been bad. We know who is doing malicious stuff, not against you necessarily, against other customers, or just against Microsoft. So we know more from, I mean, we, we can acknowledge more who is bad than if you do it on your own. And all these signals, all this knowledge that we have is getting into a machine learning uh, system and what we do. We calculate the risk, we calculate the risk in real time for every access. Every time that someone signs in in your systems, we calculate the risk of the sign in. It's normal, not that normal, dangerous. And by calculating the risk for every use, for every access real time, we also calculate the risk for the user. So if a user is one of, in one of these lists from Yahoo or I don't know the others that we had uh, a few months ago, Microsoft gets this information, get this information, and it puts it in the machine learning system. So we calculate the risk for the user. So although the user 
might have done nothing bad. We know that his credentials might be compromised and we increase his risk score. And the great thing is that this risk score is not just there for you to see. We have policies. We take actions based on that risk score. And this is what you expect from us based on the feedback. We calculate the risk. We tell you what is risky and what's not. And we let you set a policy. You set a policy based on this risk saying that I don't care if he has the right password. I don't care if he is at the right location or if he's, or if he's coming from a managed device or a domain joint device. If his risk score is calculated as high by machine learning engine of Microsoft, then block him or make him wait. Let's go now to the demo device. I know that you have seen those demos a few times, so now I will, uh, I will go through some of you have seen that demos a few times. I will go through a different approach. I will start from the management console, and then I will go to the end user to show you all the, different, uh, all the different experiences that the user might see when he accesses uh, your systems. So the first thing that I promised, and we promised here to have, is static conditional access, or let's say conditional access based on specific rules. I can go to every application I consider sensitive, and set different rules. For example, one of the sensitive applications in this demo organization is Salesforce. Let me find Salesforce here. Okay. Salesforce is here. So this is the console of Azure Active Directory. From this console, I can uh, configure single sign-on, provisioning, all kinds of uh, productivity rules on, on an application. But what I want to show you today is that if I go to the Configure tab, and uh, depending, of course, in the application, I can set up multi-factor and location-based access rules. That means that if I enable that rule for just Salesforce, I can either decide to apply it to all users or to specific groups, and this policy for me says, require multi-factor authentication, just that. I consider Salesforce sensitive, okay? And I don't care where you are coming from. I don't care where, who you are, as you see here, if you are a manager, not a manager, if you are a, a marketing or a salesperson. I don't care what device you have. I don't care. Or even if you have device management system. Anytime anyone is trying to access Salesforce from everywhere, mobile, web, client, or other client, she will be prompt for MFA, just for Salesforce. And I show you that, I will show you that in the demo. Also, we have recently introduced device-based access rules. And these device-based access rules are, again, based on identity. They are not device-based rules that are coming from our mobile device management system, although we have those. But you have to go to, uh, you have to have a mobile device management system to apply them. So just with Azure Active Directory, you can enable for this application only, or for other applications altogether, the uh, rules that say if the device is not compliant, if the device is not registered, if the device is not uh, domain joined, then block or apply uh, or uh, require MFA. Let, let me go to... Let me go to another, uh, to another application to show you another thing, another model. Another model here is, let's say, I think I have an application that has a great name. It's called Super Ultra Sensitive On-Prem Application. <laughs> you can imagine that this is a really sensitive application for my organization. However, for this application, and you can see different set of controls because this is an on-premises web application. It's not a cloud app. This is an application that traditionally you will only access through publishing tools or VPNs. Now, with Azure Active Directory, you don't need that. You can publish and protect your web applications through Azure Active Directory. So this application is using application proxy, and it's published through Azure AD to the outside world. So if I have to, to come to configure, you will see again amongst other properties. that we have also the same set of uh, rules even for on-premise applications. Let me show you. So look at that. 
I have multi-factor authentication. I have device-based rules. For this one, I have, you, I have uh, I, I've taken a different approach. So I have enabled the rules, and I can again apply it to every user or uh, just to a group. I, uh, I chose to apply it to all users. And look at that. I have configured a set of trusted IPs. We, we let you con uh, configure up to 50 different IP ranges as trusted IPs. And you can say then that if an application is not coming from this trusted IP uh, environment, then just block them. Block access when not at work. OK? This is convenient for this application, for example. Now, let me go to the, the most advanced uh, protection that we have discussed before, which is the risk-based protection, which is the innovative thing we have added here. That not, I'm, not, I'm not sure if we are the only ones, but definitely we are among the few that can do that. And as I said, it's not, it's not just technology. It's the position that we have. We have the signal. The signal that tells us who is bad out there, who is behaving, who is not behaving right. So let me start by, Azure Active, by showing you the management console of Azure Active Directory Identity Protection. Azure Active Directory Identity Protection calculates the risk in three different areas, as I said. Let me go through that. So I have events, which is the most important, as I told you. In real time, I calculate the risk of every event Accessing an application, resetting passwords, every, ac every action against your applications is uh, adding, uh, is add, is calcul uh, we calculate the risk here. So for example, you can see that I have a bunch of users that are in medium risk because they are coming from unfamiliar locations, because they have done 22 hour uh, efforts to access the application as I have here a user, or they have uh, used, uh, they have tried to access with wrong passwords many, many times. All these things are not here separately. They are here as one thing, which is actions at risk with low, medium, and high risk. And uh, if these actions happening against a specific user, or if we understand that this specific user is one of, in one of these lists with uh, leaked credentials, you will find him here. OK? You will find him here as a high-risk user. You will find him here as a medium-risk user. Not because of his actions only, because of the state of the user. And finally, we have the same thing with uh, configuration vulnerabilities. Your users don't use MFA. You have administrators that they don't use their credentials, and they are just lying there. You have administrators that don't use MFA. And finally, the, the final tool I have to show from the management console is privileged identity management. And this is protection at the front door that, protections, that protects your organizations from you. OK? So you, what you can do with privileged identity management at the front door, first of all, we let you see how many administrators you have. We understand and we know, based on our interaction, that this is not that easy to identify all the cloud administrators you have. After you identify that, let's say, let me uh, go on the global administrators, I can identify, I can restrict their access. For example, I can pick Brad Anderson, don't tell him that, as I said, and from permanent administrator, I can, uh, from, uh, from permanent, I can make him eligible or temporary administrator. That means that every time he wants to demo, he wants to present, and uh, he wants to become an administrator of this tenant, he will need to elevate his privilege for 30 minutes, one hour, and after this hour, automatically, this will go back. And now quickly, let me show you the end user experience, and I will pass uh, to the next figure. So what we said is that our user can access an application like Box, for example, and nothing will happen. Because we think that he's coming from a great place, from a nice device, so he will be just in. However, the same user for another application, like Salesforce, for example, he will be prompt or she will be prompt for multi-factor authentication. In my case, the multi-factor authentication factor I'm using is a device. I received a message that says, you have a notification. I open my Microsoft Authenticator application. And Microsoft Authenticator, which is an application available 
in every mobile platform, iOS, Android, Windows phones, you can download it now, gives me three options, which are very important, and I want you to remember them. It says verify, and you see I'm in Salesforce. I verified. I can say cancel because uh, it was by accident, but the most important one for the protection at the front door is the third one. The third one says cancel and report. That means that although something bad happened, the bad guys already have my password, I can block my account. And finally, finally, <coughs> I can, uh, for, the, for the same user again, I can go to that super sensitive application, but I will do it from, excuse me, I found it. I will do it through the Office 365 because even through Office 365, you can launch any kind of application you want. So now I can see all my applications here and I will click on my super ultra sensitive application as a user inside from Office 365. You can see that now I'm getting a really great message here that says you cannot go there from here, okay? <laughs> so we really explain to the user that it's not you, it's not a wrong password, it's not a problem. It's just that you are not at the right place. And in case that he is a user that wants to know more details or pass it to your help desk, we have that so you can see that, oh, this IP range, yes, it's not trusted. That's why you are getting this message. And with that, I will pass the floor to Demi again. Thank you, Nassos. So we protected you at the front door with the technologies that Nassos has explained. Really cool risk-based conditional access. So based on the risk of the user, you may actually decide not to let them in or push them to multi-factor authentication. So we protected at the first stage. What is the next stage? Good guys, bad behavior. How do I protect my organization from users' mistakes? How do I make sure that this doesn't turn into a vulnerability in my system? We have a variety of different technologies helping you there. For mobile applications, you're already familiar with Microsoft Intune. For mobile device management, for mobile application management. We help you there. There are a lot of mobility solutions out there. But we don't stop just with mobility or mobile applications. What about SaaS applications? I mentioned earlier, more than 80% of your employees admit using non-approved SaaS applications for work. Our own telemetry says, on average, an employee uses 17 SaaS applications. More interesting, 13% of the files that they put into those SaaS applications goes external, and 25% became public. Okay, so what happened there? My data went to a public link. And this is just the beginning. There are a lot of issues with the privileged accounts. So is the idea just to, OK, let's stop them from using SaaS applications. Or you may say, well, we're not on the cloud. Well, even though you may not be on the cloud, unfortunately, I shouldn't say unfortunately, most of the time, actually, this is good for, for good reasons, your employees are. When you think about cloud, when I talk to you, you tell me that, well, we trust cloud. I just don't know what my users are doing. I want to get more visibility. When it comes to cloud, I don't have the same level of visibility that I have on premises with the cloud applications. Well, this is why we have acquired Adalon, which became Microsoft Cloud App Security. And I would like to demonstrate it to you so you can see how easy it is to discover applications in your environment. Here I am at Microsoft Cloud App Security's console. I'm at Discovery Dashboard. I discover all the applications in my environment with no agents on user devices. We collect information from your firewalls and proxies. If you don't believe that your employees are using SaaS applications, please go ahead and try it. In most cases, our customers say that the number of applications that their users are using is 10 times more than what they normally predict. So I see there are 500, more than 500 applications out there my employees are using. All right, so I want to get more information. I don't want to block my users right away. They're trying to get the work done. There are a lot of good SaaS applications out there. They can use Box or Dropbox. It's great because it gives them great efficiency. But I want to know if they're using something that's risky, I want to block it. 
We not only discover more than 13,000 applications, we also provide you a risk score. Not all the CASB players will provide you a risk score. What does it help you with? Well, you can make a decision now whether you want to sanction or unsanction applications. You may try to do this intelligence in-house, but we have researchers that go and search for this and assign a risk score for each application. I can filter by the risk score. So I can move this to, let's say, 5. I want to see, it's a 1 to 10. 10 is least risky. 1 is most risky. So I can click on one of the applications that I see here. Let's click on AI2. I see it has a risk score of 3. You can see all the factors our research team has used to provide a score for this application. I can see, for instance, this application apparently doesn't let multi-factor authentication. Well, it doesn't have the compliance policies. Maybe I'm in healthcare. I want to have HIPAA compliance. I don't want my users to put critical data in here. OK, so I discover all these applications. Now, this is visibility. A lot of CASB providers will just give you this. What's the next step? I want to control my users' actions, just like I do on-premises. For this, I will go to control policies. Cloud App Security comes with out-of-the-box policies as well as policies that you can build from templates. Super easy to do. I see PCI compliance here. This is one of the out-of-the-box policies. I don't want customer credit card information going to a public link. Who wants that? Nobody. So this is why we have a policy for it. I created this policy, and Cloud App Security continuously detects if there is any violations against this policy. OK, I see there are two violations. Now I want to do investigation. I click on the second one. I want to see the file hierarchy here. I want to see where this file is located. OK, this is located in one of the DLP project folders. It is a test file. Oh, OK, one of my engineers is doing a test for the DLP project. It seems OK. I can do more investigation. I can reach out to this file if I want to. Let's click on the first one, payment schedule and details. Where is this file located? Well, it's located in one of my customer folders. Oh, by the way. Uh, it's a private folder. Huh. Sounds like one of my employees put a critical file onto a public link by mistake. Now I can take an action. I can click here. I can, I can see whether I can make this link private, or I can put this into user quarantine, where user only can access. This is great. Now I have visibility and control to my user's actions. Now I can see what they're doing, and I can control, rather than just blocking. So we can make educated decisions about how to act when it comes to SaaS applications. Now I'd like to invite Pragya Pandey, who's going to tell you how we can protect data on premises and in the cloud. Because eventually, if you protect the data the right way, the entire attack becomes irrelevant. Pragya? Hey, thanks, Tammy. Can you hear me? Hello, everyone. So you saw some really great capabilities for protecting your users, their identities, the devices that they work on, and the apps that they use in their day-to-day -day business in order to be more productive. But with all these defenses in place, there's a high chance that your key company data is still at risk of uh, loss because of user mistakes. We talked about good guys with bad behavior. So, wouldn't it be great if the data that these users are working on is self-protecting? And it carries the protection information wherever it travels, ensuring persistent protection, regardless of where the data is stored or with whom it's shared. Azure Information Protection helps you exactly with this problem. It helps you with providing persistent protection for your data throughout the entire data lifecycle from the time of creation, to sharing, to monitoring, and finally, to responding in case of data abuse. Azure Information Protection helps you classify, label, and protect your data so that your sensitive data remains only with people who are intended to use that data. The controls and the user interface for labeling and protecting the data are simple and intuitive, and it does not interrupt the normal course of a user's work. With Azure Information Protection, you also have deep visibility and control over the data that you share with others. Now let's see some of this in action.
Let's say I'm working on a highly sensitive document. In this case, it happens to be a due diligence document. And I want to label this document appropriately so that it's protected wherever it travels and only the authorized people have access to, to this document. So based on the content of this document, I feel that this should be marked as a secret document. And I have Azure Information Protection application installed on my machine, so I get these labels that define various sensitivity labels for uh, documents that users work on. Now, these labels are completely customizable. The admins can define these labels based on the business rules or requirements in your organization. So let's say that I want to mark this document as secret. So I go on uh, the secret label, and I also choose the scope of this document. In this case, I want only people in finance group to have access to this document. So just with a simple click of button, you will see that a few actions happen behind the scenes. A label saying that sensitivity of this document is secret was added to this document. A watermark saying secret appeared across this document, and there were, there's also a footer added to this document that says sensitivity of this document is secret. Now, if I go to the back end, you will see that a protection template is applied to this document, which restricts access to this document only to the people who are uh, authorized to access this document. Now, in many cases, admins would want this action to happen automatically. They don't want the user to take that extra step to protect the document. So let's say I'm working on this personal account log document, which is marked as internal by default. So I have an, a policy in place that marks all the documents that the user are working on by default as internal. So let's say I want to add a few credit card numbers to this file. And I copy the credit card numbers, and I just hit on Save. So when I try to save the document, you will see that an automatic ha action happened, and a, a confidential label was added to this document. So you will see that the sensitivity of this document is defined as confidential. And if I go back uh, to the file menu, you will see that a confidential protection template was added to this file. So great capability, automatic classification, and you can base it on credit card numbers, uh, social security numbers. If there is a me medical record, you can have a pattern that matches medical records. So great protection, and the classification labels and protection travels with the file, ensuring persistent protection. Now, I also talked about the complete data lifecycle protection which starts from creation to sharing to tracking and revocation. Let's let, take a look at how the tracking and revocation part works. So let's say I shared a sensitive document with some of my colleagues, and now I want to monitor the activities that happen on this file. So I come to the document tracking site, and I get a summary of all the activities that happened on this file recently. So you can see that there were 40 views on this file, which were successful by 13 different users. There were nine attempts by one particular user, but those, that attempt was unsuccessful because that user was not authorized to view this document. And the last activity happened two months ago. So there are a few views. There is a list view that gives you a list of all the users who tried to access this document, and whether they were successful or unsuccessful in trying to access the document. There's the timeline view that gives you the time period between which the file was tried to be accessed, both successfully and unsuccessfully. And then there's the map view that shows the geographical location from where this file was tried to be accessed, both successfully and unsuccessfully. So here in this case, you can see that somebody tried to access this document from Australia, but it was unsuccessful. Now, if I'm the document owner and I don't expect anybody to access this document from Australia, I may want to revoke access to this file instantaneously. All I need to do is just click on the revoke access button and that's it. Sharing of this file will be stopped instantaneously. So great capabilities, Azure Information Protection, which is currently in preview. We are going GA next week. 
So I highly encourage you to try out these features and capabilities. Back to you, Demi. Thank you, Pragya. So we helped you to protect at the front door and from good guys and bad behavior. No matter what we do, unfortunately, they breach. There are two types of organizations. One knows that it's breached, the other one doesn't. How do we get ahead of them? How do we detect them before they cause damage? Traditional SIEM solutions do not find these solutions, do not find these attacks. This is why we need to use behavioral analytics. If an attacker is breaching into the identity of an innocent user, you need to understand that innocent user's behavior on a normal day so you can identify the abnormal behavior when the attacker is using that identity. So we protect you at the long term. And we feed that information back to Azure Active Directory Identity Protection, full loop. OK, this is great, because now I can use this intelligence to protect you at the front door. We have both technologies, on-premises and in the cloud, for this. On-premises, we acquired Arado, I mentioned earlier, became advanced threat analytics. Uses user and entity behavioral analytics. Pretty much tries to understand a user's behavior on a normal day and raises alerts if there's an abnormality. In the cloud, we do this with Azure Active Directory on our identity level, with security reporting, with behavioral analytics. And for your cloud applications, we do with Microsoft Cloud App Security. At the end of it, what we are doing for all of this is behavioral analytics. It's a cluster analysis. We're trying to look for abnormal or outlier behavior. I will quickly show you advanced threat analytics attack timeline so you can see. You receive a lot of reports with traditional security solutions. We change that. We don't think that it's an efficient way of working for attacks. You need to find a needle in the haystack. You need to focus on what's important really fast. So this is how you do it. We give you something that looks like Facebook. It's a feed that shows you only relevant information. What do I see here? I see Michael Dubinsky showing some abnormal behavior. He normally uses two nor computers. He's located in Israel. He accesses uh, uh, you know, resources in the domain controller one. And I see he's also, um, today, he's accessing from six abnormal computers that he hasn't used before. And he's, using new, he's accessing new things that he hasn't done before. I'm also watching for his um, working hours. This can get creepy really quickly. But we're looking for Michael's normal working hours. And as you can see here, he exceeded his amount of working hours. So I have the suspicion that Michael's credentials may have been breached. So I go and do a little bit more investigation. I go down. Prior to this, there's a brute force attack that has happened. OK, somebody was trying to access passwords in my environment. And it looks like they have potential guesses for Michael. And prior to this, there's a reconnaissance attack. So you may see behavioral analytics technologies out there. But you need to marry this information with known malicious attack detection, because they are using golden tickets, brute force, reconnaissance. You have to see the full picture. Why this attack timeline is so important? OK, it's on the timeline. If these attackers are in your system for the time of six to eight months, you want to, if you want to put the pieces of the puzzle together, you want only relevant information on an attack timeline so you can take an action. When Michael's, now I'm convinced that Michael's credentials is breached, now I can take an action. I can go ahead and say, all right, I will just change his credentials. I will reach out to him. We do this with Cloud App Security as well. You can see in Cloud App Security, we have alerts. The same type of methodology is applied here. We, this time, we are watching for users' interactions with SaaS applications. Again, an admin account interacting with SaaS applications, having several failed login attempts, as well as um, accessing, doing an impossible travel situation. So we were able to just give you a taste of our innovative technologies within Microsoft Enterprise Mobility and Security. Our technologies are working together. Azure Information Protection is integrated to Cloud App Security. You can see the encrypted files right away. Conditional access for Azure Active Directory and Microsoft Intune is integrated to a single console. Our technologies are helping you to protect your identities, devices, applications, and data. And this is the packaging. We used to call this Enterprise Mobility Suite, and now the current Enterprise Mobility Suite becomes Enterprise Mobility and Security E3 Suite, which you see at the bottom of the slide. 
Azure Active Directory, single sign-on, MFA, all of those great capabilities, Microsoft Intune, Azure Information Protection, both of them the premium P1 suites, and Microsoft Advanced Threat Analytics comes with E3. And the technologies that we have demonstrated, like identity protection, Azure Active Directory, privileged identity management, what Prague has demonstrated, Azure Information Protection, the classifying labeling, and Cloud App Security comes with E5 suite in addition to what you have in E3. So this is just to give you a taste to whet your appetite for all the other sessions. This short session, so we try to cover as much as we can for all of our innovative technologies. But we strongly suggest you to attend these sessions because you want to go into details about what these products can provide with the engineering teams as well. And if you want to keep going, there are more sessions that are available. And I want to strongly encourage you. We show you with the best way to see how, what these technologies can do for you is just trying. We have free trial for all of our products. Go to Microsoft.com slash EMS. You will get a free trial. And you can see yourself what these technologies can provide for you. And please share your feedback for this session. We take your feedback very seriously. Thank you so much for being here. And have a great Ignite. <laughs>